Can you hear me? I can hear you, Diana. Okay. I, the, it looks like the town's audio is not on, but I couldn't hear anything. So, how are you, Nancy? I'm all right. I'm up here in northern New Hampshire having a Fourth of July. I, Very I, nice. Yeah, I'm glad Yasmin was able to get me the Zoom link. Um, kind of zoned out on that, to be honest with you, in terms of <laughs> making. Here we go. Hello, oh, Kurt. Hello, Isabella. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the pledge. Allegiance to the flag. Say something. To the Republic for which it is. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yes, Meen is taking over the technical side of the meeting today. Um, yes, Meen, are there any changes to the agenda? No, sir. And today, okay, thanks. Um, don't think there's any members of the public here, but if there are any public comments to be made, this is the time. Jim, I would like to make some additions to the agenda. Okay, just uh, let's, there's no public comments, correct? Okay, very good. Okay, so we don't have any public comments. Okay, changes to the agenda. Diana, go please. I would like to add to the agenda a discussion of Senate Bill 250 and a discussion of Senate Bill 1604. Okay, and yep, proposal. Um, I'm not sure, Len, whether we need to actually. Um, we we could discuss that without. Right. That's fine. Right. Very good. Okay. So assuming that's going to happen, Diana, later on in the meeting. Okay. Okay. Also, at the last meeting, David Cox made a comment about uh, redevelopment of condominium properties. And I didn't know if staff would take some time and uh, let us know how they responded to him. Okay. Uh, is that something maybe under comments from the board that you would like to ask Frank Davila? Okay, Frank can, okay, I can do that. And take care of that later on today. Okay, very good. All right. If there are no other changes proposed to the agenda, then uh, let's move on. And um, I we should move on to uh, approval of the minutes. And perhaps we can do both at the same time. Is there anyone who wishes to make any amendments to the minutes? Okay. No one's speaking up. In that case, is there a motion to approve? I, I, I would move to approve as submitted. Okay. Michael has made a motion to approve. I'll second. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. And that's for the workshop and for the planning and zoning meeting, correct? For both sets of minutes. Yes. Okay. And so, yes, mean, do you need a, a may I conduct a roll call? Okay. Jim? Aye. Michael? Aye. Lori? Aye. Jane? Jane's not voting. It'll be. Oh, sorry. Nancy. Diana? Diana. Aye. Nancy? Aye. Hi. Thank you. Okay. Are we good, Yasmin? We're good. Okay, thank you. All right, on to agenda item three, a okay, discussion of setback criteria for the commercial general zoning district. Mr. Davila. Good afternoon, board. So back at the May 31st, 2023 town council meeting, town council directed staff to have the planning and zoning board discuss the setback criteria for the commercial general zoning district. Um, this topic was also part of the planning and zoning board's original prioritized agenda items um, in the list. 
So for the board's review, staff provided code section 34-631, which talks about the building site area regulations, specifically subsection five, that talks about setbacks. The question that we had back when the Corretta project came about was whether a building that was in the commercial general zoning district had the same setbacks, whether it was adjacent to a residential zoning district or a commercial zoning district. So um, for example, the subsection 5A says that the following setback schedule shall apply and all properties adjoining or adjacent to a property with a residential or R zoning district designations shall incorporate a minimum of 15 foot and pretty much follow that um, the criteria that's on the table um, that's located within the memorandum that we gave you. Then subsection B talks about all buildings higher than two stories all stories above the first two stories shall have a setback minimum of five feet from the first story. So when we reviewed the Coretta project there, um, it was brought up by one of the planning and zoning board members that, well, does this mean that that building, the proposed Coretta project above the second story had to give us a five foot setback because adjacent to them was a commercial, so, uh, a commercial um, building being the Plaza La Mer, not a residential building. So I believe council wanted clarification on this matter. Um, staff discussed this at length during the Coretta project. And we believe that this applies to all properties, whether they're adjacent to residential or commercial. So it is up for discussion um, as directed by town council. Staff is here to answer any, any, questions, uh, any questions that you may have. Frank, would you just like to clarify your rationale for saying it should apply to both. Uh, yes, and then Len, Len is going to help me through this here because we do believe that subsection A. Uh, it's well, yeah, subsection A is is. I think the mistake was that the language in subsection A talking about the adjacent to residential was then included in subsection B, thinking it applied to both, but. It by its clear, you know, subsection A just says that if it's if it's adjacent to property with a residential, then you have to incorporate a minimum 15 foot landscaper buffer, you know, within the setback. And then it gives you the general setbacks. And then B just talks about, you know, that additional five feet, but there's no incorporation of the adjacent to residential. So I think it was just read to incorporate it, but I don't believe the plain language requires that it be adjacent to residential to apply that additional setback. Right. And sometimes when they want to include the same language from subsection A, it would be then five Friends. subsection A, then subsection one again, or, you know. So Frank, to make these two bits compatible, is there a change to language that you would propose? Well, I, I, I do not think that we need to do a code text amendment to, to get that clear. I mean, staff discussed it and, and we do believe that the code as it stands, as it reads today, does indicate that it is for any in any property adjacent to residential or commercial. If we were to do a, a code text amendment, we could just clarify for all um, for all properties, no, uh, no matter the designation of, of zoning districts. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we need to. I think we'll I think it's just an interpretation issue moving forward that maybe it was not interpreted correctly in the past and moving forward, it will be interpreted to apply irrespective of whether it's adjacent to commercial or residential. Board members, comments, questions? I would ask, I'm sorry, go ahead, Diana. I, I appreciate the review, Frank, and, and I, I agree personally when the credit project came up that paren B, I thought because it was not an extra residential that it may or may not apply. Um, but if there's, if, so I guess what I would like is, do you ever do a policy memo or guidance? That this is how we interpret this. So it's written down somewhere. Even if you don't have to do a, an ordinance to amend our municipal code. Uh, no, we, 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 we don't have, um, you know, a, an SOP or, or 
a memorandum that would go into file just just specifically stating that um again um the town attorney and myself just believe that the language is strong enough as it is to read that way but that does not mean that we cannot change it if that's the recommendation from the planning and zoning board I guess with Senate Bill 250, and, and right. it's going to require more than more discussion of that, that I'm not right. so sure that we can add the language. But if we could create a policy or a guidance saying that this is how we've always interpreted it, then it would be clearer for the board and it would be clearer for any applicants in the future that this is how we apply this. You have yellow stickies, Frank, that you can just put it. Uh, that's I mean, the problem. It, so let's say I'm, I'm, I'm no longer here. <laughs> Who gets that policy? Um... You know, it's, it's it's always better when it's in the code if, if right, that's what I, we want to do. I think but, Diana has a point about 250. I, I think if we then amend the code, it looks like we're doing something to make it more restrictive rather than just applying something that's already there. I mean, so for the I don't know how you, you know, you could do like, a, I don't know if you have. It, 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 I mean, for the meanwhile, till October 2024, we can 2024. do a staff. <laughs> we can do a, a staff to memo. I mean, a memo to staff. Um, that, that would be good for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I think as long as it's documented somewhere, it should mm -hmm. be sufficient. Would we, we could definitely do that. Be sufficient? I think it's sufficient because I think we've agreed that it shouldn't be, in, you know, that we, we agree on the interpretation now, so I think that would be sufficient. So if there was a written policy statement to go with that in the record, would probably Yeah, be or a memo of some kind that this is how it will be interpreted, and I, just as long as it's written down somewhere. It would save having to do a code text amendment. It, it's something that I can do, definitely. Yes. Okay. I think we're all in agreement then, unless there's any other comments. All right, good. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Frank and Len. Let's move on to item four. So just Discussion. to clarify, did we agree that we're going to have a policy statement from staff that this is how we interpret um, the 34-631 for uh, commercial general zoning districts. That's what Frank said. Correct. Yes. It'll be a, a, some sort of memo mm -hmm. that documents the interpretation. Do, do we need a consensus for that? I think that we already did. I, I didn't say anything. Nobody asked me. <laughs> I said, are we all in agreement? And nobody- We, we did okay. get three head shakes on, yeah. on this. Okay. okay. So Nancy, you're in I agreement? I apologize, Nancy. Thank Nancy? You. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, we are all in agreement. Thank you. Okay, Frank, next item on the agenda, discussion of the code section on walls and fences. Thank you. So this also came about the May 31st special town council meeting where council directed staff to have the planning and zoning board discuss the wall and fence regulations for the town's code of, uh, code of ordinance, um, specifically in regards to using walls, in this case, retaining walls, to raise the grade of the property above the adjacent grade. Um, it was also brought up to, to discuss what um, the, the board just recently approved in the ARB for 520 South Lyra. Um, staff included those plans as backup material. And then we also included subsection, I mean, code section 34-905 um, of the town's code of ordinance for the board's discussion. Um, staff is prepared to answer any to answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you. Who would like to lead off? I have a question. How, how did this uh, turn of events come come about where you had to have the three foot setback and, and, and raise property? Do you know historically how we ever got there? I'm, I'm sorry. The, what, I don't understand the three foot. Oh, well, so. cur currently now we're allowed four feet uh, on, on the main road, either the Oh, the, the, the height of the wall or fence? Correct. Yes. And then you have to move back three feet, raise that enough to be able to put, I guess, oh, okay. another four feet. And where did this come from? Because it's been on the books ever since I've come here. So, it, so that's not specifically in the books. So what the book says is that a wall or a fence, if it's in, located in the front yard, the maximum height is four feet. It even tells you how to measure it from, you know, from the from which grade, whether it's interior or exterior. And then for the side and rear yards, you can have a six foot um, high wall or fence. If you're located on US one, you can go up to eight feet. So it has those um, that criteria in there. 
So what people have done, um, especially if you drive down U.S. Highway 1, where the great difference is greater than six feet or eight feet, they do a six-foot wall. Then they set back or tier the second wall. And it's usually about 24 inches because one of our requirements is that um, you have to have landscape in front of the wall. And 24 inches is just enough for you to actually have a, a healthy hedge material prosper in that in the, those 24 inches. And then you're allowed to go an additional four story, I mean, four feet, five feet, whatever it may be that allows the code. With the setback. Well, without wall, walls are allowed to go all the way to the property line per the code. So you can have the first wall on the property line. You go up six feet. Then you go back 24 inches, you put your hedge material there, and then you can go up another six feet or four okay. feet, whatever the, the regulation may be. Currently, my backyard runs on Ellison Wilson, mm -hmm. and the wall there is four feet. Okay. And so you're telling me I could go up another two feet? Well, Oak, Oak Harbor is a planned unit development. Huh. So it, it is a little bit different than the regular single family homes you have to abide by whatever the site plan approval was for you for oak harbor so in this case if it was four feet you have to stay at four feet yes thank you no problem frank can i go back to the the south lyra house uh, yes. case there was a lot of controversy about the the pool area there can i just ask on the plans there was the i believe it was a 10 foot high building wall that held up the pool. Am I correct about that? Usually uh, the 10 or 11. It's 11.7. 11. And then with a pool, you have to have another fence. So I, I believe it would have to come up at least 15 feet on the side. And on the back of the house, it's 15.5 feet. If we just, if I just ask about the, the wall itself, was that wall set back 10 feet from the property line? No, it's not. Okay. Would that, would that normally be a requirement if it was the wall of a house? If it was the wall of the house, the main structure, yes, you have to meet whatever the setbacks are for that, yes. Okay, so at the time this came up to you bef before it was approved, you felt that it was acceptable even though it was within 10 feet of the property line? Well, it, it's not habitable space, so we didn't treat it as a dwelling unit, okay. uh, which is what um, normally you would do for the setbacks. It's, it's it's as if it could be an accessory structure, if you if you will, mm -hmm. uh, which are allowed to go up to five feet to the property line. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you had the the six foot wall on the property line, and then the the wall for the pool went up to the eleven point whatever Diana mentioned. Yeah, I believe that they're, they're they are doing the tiering effect there. Um, and as you said, they could have gone up six feet plus an additional six feet. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, because that, that's treated as either the side or the, yeah, that's treated as a side yard because it's behind the front of the of the garage. I, I believe that we Nancy, should Nancy, interpret. Diana, hold, Diana, hold on a second. Let Nancy go first, please. Thank you. My understanding that that was just for US-1, which a, a, an excellent example of that is the Ocean-1 development. If anybody wants to drive by and see a real life picture of what that looks like, my understanding that that was not used for side yards, but for rear yards abutting US-1. Did, did, do I misunderstand that? The, the code doesn't specify for what part of the town. I, you can, I'm you sorry, can, Frank. I, th I thought you just said that a couple minutes ago. No, no. If, if we look at um, the backup material attachment number one, it gives you what the maximum height of walls or fences are. And if you see, actually 34-905, 34 front yard, four feet, side yard, rear yard, six feet, side rear yard, if it's non-residential, you can go eight feet. And then it says that... Um, you, you made some reference to US-1 just a minute ago. I, I mean, it's on the tape. We can go back. I, just, I, I was trying to understand what context... Anywhere in the town. I, I just gave US-1 as an example. Okay. Because that's where most of us drive through, and we actually see the tiering of the walls. Right. So that was an example that I gave. Not saying that it's it lots of running US one shall be permitted to have a maximum six foot high wall. That's right under the friend one is the asterisk. Yeah. So US one is specifically included in the rule, and it says six foot high. 
Nowhere does it say you can have a series of six foot high walls or a series of walls. Cause then in my front yard, I could have three, four foot walls and I could have a 12 foot wall in my front yard. You, you are it, correct. It doesn't say that you cannot have it. It doesn't say that you can have it. So I think the correct interpretation for harmony purposes is that you should only allow these heights that are in paren one and the series of walls is an aberration and is not in harmony. Um, the, it seems like the code does provide for all for the front yard, side yard, rear yard. It's it's inclusive of everything. I I do believe I I believe that the the five twenty Lyra circle. I voted against that. I know that I was outvoted, but it was a split vote. It wasn't a unanimous vote. And to have a 15 foot wall on the side, if if both of my neighbors had 15 foot walls, I would be in a gully. And um, I, I don't, that's adversely impacting other people's property rights. I don't think that we're stuck precedent wise to 520 Lyra because the adjoining property owner that was going to be impacted by this testified on the record that they were okay with it. So, um, that might give us a one-off, but I, I think that it was a, a mistake and it shouldn't be uh, how the code is interpreted. And again, I think we need policy or guidance is that, you know, this walls and fences includes retaining walls because by the plain language, you would assume that it includes retaining walls since re retaining walls are not excluded. I concur with that and uh, you know I, maybe i don't know if there are certain areas of town where it's more applicable than 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 others in, in terms of what's advisable right now the reading of it it's it's all permissible and you know i i think that's going to create problems and and a devaluation of people's property if they're living in canyons well i i, I could try to address the the two comments that I heard, which one was harmony. And again, this this, this specific house did come before the planning and zoning board. Harmony was, was one of the things that the board reviewed and approved, whether it was unanimous or not, um, or a three to two vote, four to one vote, it still got approved. Um, so it, it did get reviewed for that. And the majority of the board did say that it was in harmony. Regarding the impacts to the adjacent neighbors, they still have to address the drainage concerns, which is our levels of services for the town. So it wouldn't impact them uh, drainage wise. If anything, it would be more aesthetics, you know, um, as I think it was brought up at the planning and zoning board. Now you're looking at a 11, 12 foot wall with railing on top. Mm -hmm. um, that again, I, I believe is more aesthetics. Uh, but the planning and zoning board did discuss that. And I believe that's when the, the neighbor came up and gave his uh, comments saying that he was okay with it. Uh, of course, that's not gonna be the same situation for every person that you know that lives adjacent to, to somebody that has an 11 foot wall, but that was the case for 520 South Lyra. I believe it's incumbent on the planning and zoning board to protect the, <laughs> protect the property rights of everyone and uh, don't allow 15 foot walls next to your neighbors and to go with our, our current code, the 34-905 and use those print one, the maximum heights for walls and fences. Let's hear from other members of the, the board who haven't spoken yet, if they wish to. How does this you know, apply to the houses on Ocean Drive that are gonna be raising their lots? Um, we, we would really have to look at it case by case because um, we, we do have a lot of great difference in Juno Beach. I mean, we start at six feet and AVD all the way to 43. Um, I, I saw the documentation that um, Diana provided to everybody. Um, and, and I did look at what I believe Palm Beach did. Um, and they don't actually flat out say that you can't do tier walls they just um in one of the code sections they actually say that if it's within 10 feet you cannot go higher than nine feet or 10 feet i believe it is so maybe we could consider something like that um if you're planning on tearing the wall um instead of taking what the interpretation 
by staff that has been, you know, you can do six feet, set it back two feet, and then another six feet. You can provide maybe a total that from the first wall, if you're deciding to put another wall that's within 10 feet or whatever number we decide, from the bottom of the grade to the top of the wall, second wall, third wall, whatever it may be, you cannot go higher than X amount of feet. That's what Palm Beach did. They used 10 feet and nine feet for those numbers. Um, that's that, that's maybe a solution um, for what Diane is bringing up, but we would have to review that and study that. Lori, I Lori. only included Palm oh, Beach. Diana, because... hold on a second. Let, let Lori finish, please. Um, okay. I just, it's not that simple that we can do a one size fits all because our terrain is different, vastly different than Palm Beach and from anybody else. I mean, this has got to be almost a case by case situation here i think you can't just say nobody's going to build a 10 foot retaining wall next to you diana that's not that's never going to happen unless and the question with this one is it's not a retaining wall just to hold up land it's a retaining wall to hold up a pool that's a different thing too i think this is just not we can't just put some numbers on this i think it should be addressed but it's not that simple Jane, do you want to weigh in? Um, I just have a question. How how much did they raise that property from its base elevate or from its elevation? It seems like it's a lot higher than uh, from finished grade. And actually, I'm sorry, I can't see this. It looks to be it, it should be on the elevation drawing sheet two out of nine. I'm sorry, I can't see that. It, one of them says average grade, and there's a little number next to it. I, I for the life of me, can't read that. Uh, and then it says whatever the finished floor is. So more than likely, that's what they're raising. Average grade is plus 30.6. And what's the finished floor? The finished floor. It should be right above that finished grade. No, well, average I'm grade sorry. is in its own little. It says finish. Floor slab, 31 point something. So it could uh, be about 11 inches, maybe a fill that they're bringing in, if that's the accurate number. I, I just can't see it. <laughs> and then what's happening on the, on the US one side where they're putting in a wall now? Right. So, Including well, of course, you, that grade, <laughs> um, it's probably like in the high 20s. Um, and then U.S. Highway 1, we're probably around eight or so, nine maybe. So that's a great, great difference. So, yes, they're going to be putting up a wall in the rear um, so that way they can use their backyards. And that's pretty much what you see on the back of U.S. 1 pretty much everywhere at this time. And that wall, um, I believe this in this case, it is six feet. Um, I don't believe they're doing the tier wall. They are. I'm sorry. So they are doing the tier wall in this case because then the great difference from one end to the other is more than six feet. If we were to say, you know, we, we don't allow anything more than six feet, then they just wouldn't be able to use their entire backyard, which actually has some people have done that um, on U.S. Highway One, and that's uh, when you see just the, the PVC fencing instead of a retaining wall. And that some of these have. I can't hear. Some of these houses like on Zenith, where the backyards actually go down the slope. Same thing. They can fill their backyards. Yes. Yeah. We, we, currently, we do not have anything in the code that says that you cannot fill um, your backyard. Yeah. That, that's because of the great difference. Correct. Yes. I thought Dane had a really good question. I think we should go back to that. Um, the side... The side yard, it has the six foot retaining wall and the five foot, seven inches retaining wall. So they could have a swimming pool that would be on their second floor. So I think the elevation grade change would be from the slab that Frank just described to the second floor. Was, wasn't that the question? It's a good question. So that's how much fill they were bringing in. And that's how much they're raising the build grade for the swimming pool deck area that overlooks their neighbor. Well, the, and, that's and the, they have a fence on top the, of that. That is the great difference um, for that section of where the 
pool deck um, is going to go. But around the property, the elevation is what um, what Len read, which is thirty dash five, I believe. Which is that's what the average grade is for that property. So it's clear they don't need to bring in any fill because this is a flood area because this is the highest. This is one of the highest grades in our town. It's on the ridge road, so they don't need to bring in fill for flooding purposes. They're bringing in fill because they want a particular view from their pool deck. So that could be anybody in town, Lori. And I'm not concerned about myself. I'm concerned about harmony throughout our neighborhood and, and creating rules that everyone can live with that won't destroy someone else's property value. It, it would seem to me that this and the top, topography, it, just, item, it would seem to me that this and the topography item are somewhat related, especially as it is, related to Lyra, you know, it, that property. Right. I, I guess, I guess we're going more away from what a wall and a fence is, which is really what the discussion is about to retaining wall slash fill, which is the topographic aspect of it. Yes. I think that we need to understand. Michael. Okay. Nancy, hold on a sec. Michael. Frank, if you recall, a number of years ago, uh, I think along Ocean Drive behind the lake, somebody wanted to raise a wall to one of those developments from four feet. Um, mm. I think it was just a foot and the board turned it down. And, uh, but it then went to town council and they overrode it and gave them the variance. And I'm not sure if, if we were dealing with a PUD there, if you remember, or uh, what's for court. Wax yes. for court. Yeah. So that was a, that was a gate that we treat the same way as a fence wall, four feet maximum for the front, because obviously it's the gate for the front. Um, they went five feet and a couple of inches, I believe, um, well, after they, they the applied for the variance. After the variance was, down was given. And then the town council approved it. That's correct. Yes. Okay. So it is appropriate for this discussion just to mention mm -hmm. it historically. Yes, yes. Thank you for that. Thanks. Nancy, you're up. I think holistically, what's happening is people are building up, right? That's where the views are. Wherever those views can be exploited, they, they will be. Wherever people can go higher, they will be. The lots in Juneau Beach, not unlike many seaside communities, are, are relatively small. And the town is, you know, in terms of single family residential, pretty well fully built out and so the only place left to go is up and without some restrictions on how high and how you achieve building up i think that you'll continue to see homes and townhomes that are going to get increasingly higher and narrower and you know there, there's the one community up behind town hall park and i'm sure people paid millions of dollars for those houses and some people may love them you know but it's dark I feel like I'm in midtown Manhattan. There, there's no sunlight. So it's a question of, yes, topography. It's a question of harmony. It's a question of code, but it's also a value statement. And I would like to ask for a consensus that says that this board is recommending to council that council ask staff to come back with some language that would cap some of these opportunities to build particularly tiered walls in the side and the rear of the properties. And if somebody really has a hardship that they, they can't put a swing set in their backyard, you know, of course they should come to town hall and apply for a variance or, or, you know, have a discussion as to what can be done maybe before they purchase the property, because without any restrictions, we're, we're going to see many skyscrapers and the person to the left and the right of you, you know, you, you could say that we're going to keep the drainage on the property. I understand that. But what about, you know, the $20,000 I just spent in landscaping and the person to the left and the right of me now has boxed out any daylight I get. So all my landscaping guys, I see with a lax code, given the demand for real estate in Juno Beach, given the demand and the absolute, you know, propensity of developers, homeowners, speculative home builders to build up. That's that's what we're looking at. That That isn't going to go away. And the adverse effect on neighboring abutting properties, I see a lawsuit there that Juno Beach's codes, frankly, don't protect 
the homeowners' rights that are you know already there. So I I think it would be wise to to have some language to protect everyone involved, including property owners, staff, and the town itself, to inform people and instruct people just how high you can build and by what you know kind of tricks of the trade you can use to achieve that. And right now we don't have that language. And unless you know, everybody can build a 15 foot retaining wall on the side in the front, or rather the side in the rear of their property, which I think to everybody would be unacceptable. Personally, I live in a planned unit development where that can't occur. So I have no dog in this hunt. I just think it's going to be bad for business. And I think that somebody somewhere is gonna decide that Juno Beach isn't doing its job and take a position legally. Frank, your well, thoughts? The, the the questions that I would have is, are we talking about adding fill where the grade of the entire lot is being compromised? Or are we talking about adding fill where a section of the lot, like again, this house on 520, you know, you're, you're there. Yes, they have a wall. They're adding fill. They're putting a pool on top of it. Um, we have another house, not, not 12 feet up in height, but houses around the lake, um, 220, um, 190 that have pools in the back that have retaining walls about three feet in in the air and then a pool in there so i need clarification are, are we trying to stop that or are we trying to stop just fill in general because if fill in general is going to be difficult because a lot of the homes in juno beach including actually the preserves at juno beach have a retaining wall on the back of their properties that range you know from two feet all the way to six feet if i remember correctly um, and they had to bring fill in for those properties. So we need clarification on that. What what are we trying to to do here? And then if you know if it's fill in general, then yes, that that warrants staff coming back to maybe talking to a geotechnical engineer and and discussing what the proper procedure would be for that. Um, do you want to follow up first, and then we will go to Diana? Yeah, I mean, right, right now, we, we have no barriers, really, to how you can achieve these walls to the left and the right and the rear of you. Um, and so I'm, I'm saying that the tool or, 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 you know, fill is one of those tools, but code on building heights for walls and retaining walls, particularly when these walls adjoin the living structures. Maybe they shouldn't be defined as, you know, auxiliary structures or somehow, you know, not otherwise attached to the house. In fact, they are. You're, you're going to walk out of your bedroom and fall into your pool. That's an attached amenity. So I'm not talking about going back and re-legislating. If people have gotten permits to do what they're doing, then they're going to do what they're going to do. But I'm saying going forward, not only have we destroyed the natural dune system, which keeps those houses up near the tops of the dunes, you know, not in a floodplain. I mean, it's quite remarkable that we're not in a floodplain in much of Juneau, given we live you know, on sort of a mile of land between the intercoastal and, and in the Atlantic Ocean. But if we continue shaving into those dunes, reshaping those dunes, not only are we gonna have adverse impact you know, on our neighbors and on the visuals of our town, but we are going to affect topography and there, there isn't an engineering firm that is really working on this with us. So I, I think we probably need to put a stop um, on what we're doing to our dune system and what we're doing to our community, because language can, can be used to build a wall. And if you need to bring in, in other words, I think people can make a case as to why you need a second story pool. Nobody's saying don't have a swimming pool, nobody's saying don't buy, build a house. But it, you know, when there is adverse impact onto our inherent dune system and to our neighbors, um, I, I don't think that it's necessarily by right. You can just go up 15, 16 feet. Diana? I, I think we can step back and we don't have to look at it as a very complicated issue. We can just say we don't name retaining walls within 34-905, but we don't exclude them. So they have to meet the height restrictions that are in paren one, maximum height. And it allows for a swimming pool and a front yard and it allows for US-1. I mean, the, whoever drafted this code thought of the possibilities. 
And this preserves Lori's issue about site by site. If you want to go higher, you need a variance. It preserves what Michael Stern gave us the information about the way it's been interpreted in the past. If you want to go higher, you need a variance. So it's to me, it's very simple. We have four foot in the front, six foot on the side, six foot in the back, and some other uh, under the asterisk, if you have a swimming pool in the front yard or you're next to US-1, you have something a little bit different. But I don't see why we have to do anything different than the plain language of the code, except it needs to be applied to retaining walls. And you don't get to go any higher than this by putting a series of walls unless you get a variance and, and the town council says it's okay. But the code speaks for itself in my mind. I, I think the code, even if you leave it this way or you add retaining walls, it still wouldn't solve the issue that you have because then it's still, so you have a wall, you set it back two, three feet, four feet, five feet. What if the person decides to do another wall? That's its own independent wall that's going to have its own independent exterior grade and interior grade. So if that's what we want to look into, then I would recommend looking at the handout that you gave. The town of Palm Beach has a section 134-1670 retaining walls, and it says if a retaining wall is within 10 feet um, of a wall and or fence in the same front street side or street rear yard, the retaining wall and wall or fence shall not exceed a total combined height of nine feet. So. I yeah, personally, I, I wouldn't want problem. nine feet. I think the four foot, six foot, eight foot is, is plenty. It's just that that's not going to solve the problem, Diana. Even even for, um, let's keep picking on Ocean One, not the US One side, but um, the interior lots that are adjacent to Old Town Lane, depending on where you are in the project, because they needed to keep the slope of the land, because that's what our code says, you know, um, it goes up and down. If you drive Ocean One um, Lane, um, when you're adjacent to where you're in the rear yards on the north side, some of those walls, the difference grade between Old Town and them, they range from 10 feet to two feet, I believe. So those retaining walls vary in size. So now we're telling them, keep the slope of the land. And now we're saying, but you can't go more than six feet. I, I have to Again, laugh it, about it, keeping the slope of the land with Ocean One, but the, that putting that aside, and trying to understand the issue here, I thought that they did have to get a variance to get a higher retaining wall. No, they did not. That that project, the only reason that project was a special exception was because they decided to go with the three stories um, 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 at 45 feet, I believe. That's that's the only thing that um that required them to to be treated as a special exception. Because they went that. higher than they were allowed. No, it's no, no. It's it's similar to what we have in the commercial general zoning district. You can go two stories, thirty feet, or you can go three stories, forty feet, whatever it may be. I'm sorry, I don't remember right now. And but if you do that, you're treated as a special exception. Yeah, it, it, it was a special exception site plan. I mean, it was a regular site plan approval that they went through um, with us. As I recall. Um, the developer got the people on Old Town Lane to come in and seek a variance in order to put a wall up to 12 feet. And the board denied it. And then they withdrew the request. And I don't think we ever okay, heard that's anything. That's the, the, maybe the misunderstanding there. Yeah, so Old Town. Now, on so during the Ocean One project, um, the Ocean One installed additional landscape to, to, to create a, a landscape buffer between both properties. The residents at Old Town wanted something additional to that. So they wanted to do a fence on top of a wall, but they didn't want to tear. They just wanted to go straight up. And that's when um, I believe that got turned down. Yeah, so, so that was one solid wall going up higher than six feet. But presumably, since they never came back, they resolved the problem to they, everybody's they, satisfaction. They did. There's no easy solution here, Frank, is there? I, I, I would need direction. <laughs> uh, again, I, I, I think we're, we're, we're talking about Phil um, now, um, and we're talking about 
you know, deciding whether we want to see something mm -hmm. like 520 South Lyra, which I think there could be other solutions for that. Uh, maybe talking specifically about pools or it's accessory for me uses again, so and what they can do. Um, and then we address the fill on how much fill you can bring in or, you know, what's allowed for the entire site um, of a home. But again, uh, we would have to look into talking to maybe a geotechnical engineer on that. And the Palm Beach approach, setting multiple height limits or or, or com compound height limits, is that? Yes, but but this right here doesn't say that you cannot bring fill in. So they will still be bringing fill in more than likely. It's just mm -hmm. um, what do we uh, max it out as right. uh, with the walls? Because this does talk specifically to uh, about retaining walls. And if that's the route we want to go, we can. And we'll look at is 10 feet enough, maybe five feet, 15 feet, and the total height um, overall, it's something else that has to be considered. Diana? I'm sorry, I was frozen and I didn't hear any of that. I, I don't understand the problem with just having four foot, six foot, eight foot and get a variance if you want something different. Because to me, that would solve everything. It would be case by case. You'd have to look at specifics, topography. What, what, what I mentioned... What I mentioned, Diana, is that so we keep it the same way it is. We say for retaining walls. But if that person comes in and tells me, Frank, I'm going to do another wall eight feet away from the initial wall. That wall is going to be four feet. So he has a six foot wall. Then he tears the second wall eight feet going four feet up. Then that would meet the code, even even the way that you want to rewrite it. I would say it does not meet the code because you're using a series of walls to thwart the code for the height requirement. The height and is the code uh, does not address that. So maybe that's something that would have to be discussed and new language may have to be added. But if you leave it the same way it is right now, the code does not say that you cannot have multiple walls within your property or fence. Yeah, but our building heights, you know, the, the commercial 60 feet. Well, how about if I go 10 feet from my property and go up 70 feet? Why isn't that the same thing? I don't understand. It's a height restriction. These, these fences and walls have a height restriction. It's in paren one. And it's, right, because uh, we it's, measure it from grade. So the grade does change uh, when we're talking about the fence because now they're bringing in fill, as you mentioned, and now that's the new starting point for the wall. For houses or main structures, we go by either crown of the road, so that's never going to change, or we go by what the, whatever the average grade is prior to any land alteration, which, again, that number is not going to change. So that's the differences between a uh, uh, yeah, height main structure and... The height of the structure is not an issue because that's fixed. Why isn't the fence fixed? Because there's height restrictions in parent one. I mean, I guess I understand what you're saying, that you could build your lot up as high as you want. I could have a series of retaining walls. I could start at 12 feet if I wanted. I could start at 20 feet by doing a series of retaining walls. I'd just get a smaller house. But see, that doesn't make sense to me. So I, that's why I don't believe you can interpret the code that way. I know we have in the past, but it, it really doesn't make sense to me. It's just you take in a box like a, like a wedding cake. Wedding cake, wedding cake, we're wedding still cake. Going to be in harmony with the town. The still... Yeah, no, um, Lens, right? You you really couldn't do that, you know, that that example, the twenty foot example, uh, because you still have to have you still have to meet other standards. So harmony being one of them will have to be met. Well, and that's so, exactly the argument about the height that you don't meet it if you're doing a series of fences. Well, I. I, I would beg to, to to make the case that, you know, right now you have these homes being built using a series of retaining walls and fill to achieve certain heights for whatever reason, built swimming pools, viewscapes, whatever reason. And so that becomes the new normal. That that will be the definition of harmony is to build other homes in that image. Right now, if you take a snapshot of Juno Beach and say what's in harmony in these certain neighborhoods, you, you know, you would see ranch homes, you would see homes that are kind of built into the dune structures in terms of the grade, um, increasingly without any barriers to this type of activity, the new, you know, kind of pencil house that's retained by a series of retaining walls, you know, we, we don't even have an engineer on the case, but that will become the new normal, that, that will become the harmony that we create by doing nothing. As a practical matter, 
I, I think ultimately it's dictated by the size of the lot. So you just can't keep going up and up and up. You'll run out of space. So I think it's self self adjusting or self limiting. Right. I, I, again, um, with the conversation um, that that we've been having, it seems like you know we want to stop what happened at five twenty South Lyre, which is have a second story pool or structure. Um, so maybe that's something we can address, and and really the fill question has to be addressed separately. Um, because again, I just don't see how most of the projects here would work if, if we start doing that. Um, the the most of the homes need to bring fill in for them to work, because they're going to have to build a house on a flat surface, whether it's um, slab on grade or whatever it is. So they need to bring fill in for that. Um, so if we're going to say, no, you cannot, or no, you cannot bring more than three feet, four feet, five feet, then that's something we can discuss. But some projects are just not going to work. Um, they don't. The, the, well, the preserve <laughs> the Juno Beach. Don't. Nancy, the preserve of Juno Beach wouldn't have worked if we didn't allow Phil to be brought in. Right. I, I, I didn't build the preserve at Juno Beach. Yes, I happen to own property there. I own property up and down the eastern seaboard. I didn't make all the rules for it. So that that example doesn't really make any sense to me. What we're talking about is going forward. How do we want the town to look? How do we want it to live? What are our engineering codes? And maybe if some projects don't work, I'm sitting right now looking at Squam Lake and I couldn't in New Hampshire in a mountain. There's no way I could dig a foundation within X amount of feet of the nearest structure or the shoreline. So I could come in here and buy all the acreage I want but my project simply may not work. Too bad for me. So I'm sorry if Juno Beach can't be everybody's Disney World, but we have an obligation to represent a town of voters who don't want to see this type of building continue unchecked. And that's what we're here to discuss. And with all due respect to staff, staff should be looking for ways to fulfill that. And unless this board right now, you know, because it's getting late here, um, you know, wants to make a consensus that we don't care. And so let's go on the record and say we don't care. So I, I don't believe anybody's saying that, Nancy. They're just well. Then let, let, let's the hear direction. some solutions. Let let let's hear some let's hear some some ideas of what we I, can. I, do. I would make a motion to observe a thirty four nine zero five maximum height of walls and fences without a series of walls being allowed. Uh, ex unless under a variance. So then that way we don't change our code. We're not more restrictive or more burdensome. And uh, because our code is clear to me, but then if you decide that your project can't work, the town council can decide whether they're going to allow you to do something that could potentially adversely affect the other property owners. And, and, and those individuals on town council are fiduciaries of the town. We're not. We're an advisory board. So can we get a consensus to have staff take, you know, advice to council that we think this type of building needs to be checked by simply enforcing and, and clarifying what's in our code already, as Diana pointed out? Or are we going to abandon this issue and move on to our next agenda item? I made a motion. You could second it. And then we yep. could see I second it. I second the motion. Repeat your proposal. Would you re repeat what you proposed? I make a motion to observe the maximum height for walls and fences in section 34 905, paren 1, with any exceptions, including a series of walls having to go for variance. I second the motion. Well, I have a question for you. We don't want to encourage variances, correct? We want to set clear policies. We're not we're not encouraging variances, but that is something that people, anybody can go in and apply for. Nobody's Even saying, that, hey, come yeah, over here. We get could a just variance. take that part of the language out. Yeah, yeah we could. Right. Okay. Yeah, so, Diana, you, your proposal I, is to say that you simply don't want to allow a series of walls to make it very simple, correct? Unless to get a variance. So, actually, that, I'm sorry, just to, something else I thought. Um, we may not be able to actually make any of this um, changes 
because of Senate Bill 250. Right. Because that would be, you know, having them go through a variance process just to get something that they currently can get right now would be more well, restrictive. We're, I'm sorry. Ruben, we are you, under 250. We're limited you, to September 28, 2022. And from the discussions with Michael, he's brought up at least three scenarios where someone wanted a higher height limit than 905 and they went before town council. So it's something that we've done before. It's not something new that's going to be more burdensome. It's how we have interpreted it in the past. And I do see South Lyra as a, a it's a one off because the neighbor approved it so it doesn't have to be precedent forever never would you weigh in on this please i mean I, I i do think there's a 250 problem because as frank said you're right now people can do a series of retaining walls and now you're saying they can't do a series of retaining walls without getting a variance so that is more burdensome and restrictive also frank how does subsection three about the combination of wall and fence play into this or does it not uh it, it really does not because okay. of a fence is not a retaining wall so you could just put the fence on top of the retaining wall, but doesn't impact the retaining There is a specific, and the, the code actually talks about it. So actually right behind us is a good example. They have a, a wall on top of a, a fence on, a top, fence of on top of a wall. Uh, yes, and they're measured differently. For either, the, the fence is measured from interior grade. The wall is measured from exterior grade. Um, and the fence has to be a specific type of fence, which is a metal picket fence. Metal picket, so that yeah. way it allows you to okay. see through and have landscape. I just so. want to make sure. Excuse me, everyone, just for <laughs> Diane is frozen. And so she's asked that I put her on my speakerphone and I'll try to feed her through my mic whenever she wants to speak. Um, it, it, it's, I, I, I know from speaking to, to, to I'm counsel. Sorry. Nancy, can I just ask you to hold on for a moment, please? Len, I, I, I didn't catch what you were saying. I'm sorry, if you wouldn't mind repeating. Oh, no. well, I was asking about subsection three. That's what we were talking about most recently. But I did say that I think if you're requiring somebody to get a variance to go above those height limits, whereas we've always allowed people to have a series of walls up to those height limits, then you are being more restrictive. Mm -hmm. but Michael, but, what but but allowing those series of walls I wanted to point to out that, in our uh, code. The, um, when the board opposed the what was that Wex, Wexler court for court? Um, it, it turned it was more of a political decision, and that wasn't a retaining wall either. It was that was just a gate, just to go up. It, it was, was just a wall, jumping over. right. It was a wall around the community. It wasn't a retaining. And but uh, the town council passed it over the recommendation of the zoning board. It was, had more to do with politics than than any any other reason. I think for doing it, because normally. In the past, we, we've studiously uh, refused to issue variances when they were in, in conflict with the town ordinance. So that that was a, well, a variance is always in conflict with the town ordinance. It's just whether you meet the criteria for the variance, which is and, and, which are very but, yeah. And but in that case, it really did restrictive. <laughs> Frank, what is your sense of, of of Diana's motion here? What do you see as the pros and cons? Can I, can I Again, we, we go back to Senate Bill 250 if we can actually well, even do it at all. Let, all, right, all right, let's leave that to the side for the moment. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Nancy, would you let Frank speak first? No, I, I'm we'll gonna I'm 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 gonna jump in here. I'm a board. Nancy, member. would you just hold on for no, a second? I'm, I'm gonna jump in here because the definition Nancy, would you try to follow the rules of order, please. I, I'll be happy to give you the floor. Let's you know just what? Frank <laughs> and then we'll go to you. Well, the, the SB 250 is there's no language if you search. The litigation in Florida, restrictive and burdensome. And I know Len has to agree with me because the senior partner in his firm and Nancy Strout, the top leading land use attorney in South Florida, have and, and Diana Davis, our own attorney, have searched this. And burdensome and restrictive is going to be de defined by the courts that with SB 250. Okay, That's Nancy. When you, when you, okay, but when you interpret statutes that have terms that are not defined, you use their plain and ordinary, it's a rule of statutory construction, you use their plain and ordinary meaning. So you'd have to rely on the plain and ordinary meaning of burdensome or restrictive. Yes, there may be cases that interpret it in the future, but right now we have to just apply them as they're written to the best of our ability and use the terms as they're what their plain and ordinary definition are. No, I'm going to no. go back. Nancy, I'm going to cut you off here because I have asked Frank a question when you, you interjected here. Okay. I'd like to know Frank's views on Diana's proposal, regardless of current state regulations. Pros and cons, uh, Frank. 
I, I, I believe if we take out the variance language out, it would be something that we could incorporate in there if we want to stop the tiering of walls. Okay. Well, um, it's clear language. It tells you you cannot do it. You have a maximum height. Um, it's done. I would say that again with the, with the <laughs> I, I, I if we are going to allow it, the language from Palm Beach talking about retaining walls would be a good language to incorporate. In either case, I would not put any type of language regarding variances mm -hmm. in there. That's kind of a given. If you don't like the code, you apply for a variance. So I, I wouldn't put that, the second part of it in there. Diana, if we can just jump back to you then on this. Can, you can hear everything okay, Diana? Okay. So you heard, you heard Frank's Okay, you heard Frank's comment just now on your proposal. He said, you, you know, it would be possible to obviously go ahead and prohibit combinations of walls, or you could have the kind of language you have in Palm Beach, where you set a limit on a secondary wall, if I have that correct, Frank. Right. So what is your sense of, of, of that, Diana? Would the Palm Beach approach perhaps make more sense? Frank, your thought. Let's go back to Frank and hear from him. Uh, I'm fine with that language. Again, we're just limiting it to six feet, four feet, or eight feet, depending on which which one it fits. Um, and as long as we just treat it that way um, and and don't add the variance, I'm, I, I think that could work. That variance language. Yeah. Other thoughts. My thought is uh, we should leave it alone. Um, because in some cases, uh, I think it's appropriate to tier if, if there's no other solution. And as you pointed out, Frank, it's more restrictive when, when we do this. Um, I'm not sure that that wasn't working. Sorry, I was just asked to take 250 aside. Right. Right. Um, yeah, so yeah. that was my response was taking 50 out of the right. Senate Bill right. 250 out of the equation. And that was yeah. my comments were based on that. Okay. To, to leave it alone because uh, in some cases it, it can be the only solution that somebody can have. And I, I think the size of the lot ultimately dictates how many times you can back up and tier and raise and whatever. Most of the lots are pretty small. So we're not going to be building skyscrapers unless I misunderstand. Well, yeah. So, so the larger projects is usually where we see this. Um, for 520 South Lyra, again, it was more about the pool. And that's why I mentioned maybe we want to address that separately um, than address it in this manner. But um, yes, all, all, all the tier walls... Um, the major ones are for the bigger projects. I mean, but again, we, we do have the homes on US Highway 1 where the great difference is just too great and they either lose their yard or, you know, they have to do a tier wall. I think your point about addressing South hold Lyra hold on. Hold on. separately. No, Diana, let Michael finish, please. Uh, separately because of the pool makes sense in, in this case. It, it seems to be a one-time pretty much one time thing might come up in the future but uh so that that's my thought okay diana go ahead I okay. Kim, can you hold that phone closer to the microphone if you can uh, pull railing the 520 South Lake, where they're US 1 side, they're not the property owner that abuts US 1 to my knowledge. It was the church. And I don't, the church came in and said a 15.5 inch wall is okay with me next to my property. You know, we didn't even hear from them. And sure, they wanted that wall so they could extend their property. But because that's a pie shaped lot, it's, it's an odd shaped lot. It, it, you had to force it to even fit their 70 foot wide building requirements because it's not 70 foot wide at the street. 
you know, so it's a strange pie lot anyway, pie shaped lot. It is. So um, I agree that it's different, but I don't agree we got all the property owners input and um, and the benefit that you give to one developer is detriment to your existing homeowners, to the existing church property. You know, it's just, it's, it's, you need to consider all of those things. That's why this series of flaws is such an unknown. And if you had to go with something like Palm Beach to say 10 feet maximum, I, you know, I would much rather that than a series of walls, unknown height. And but I, I thought our code only you brought in fill if you were in a flood area. But otherwise, you don't build up because you're against you've you've exceeded what the comprehensive plan says. Because the comprehensive plan requires you to preserve the existing slope. So if you put a wall in and make your lot higher than your neighbor, just so you got a better view, then you've you've uh, of that part of our comprehensive plan. So if we can go back to the the maximum height. Um, okay. I still think we should observe the height of wall to what's currently in the code. Right. And the, not a theory. Diana, the, the, to, the topography issue is going to come up on the next agenda item. So let's see if we can just focus right now on your your proposal to restrict multiple retaining walls. Lori and Jane, I wonder if, if either of you want to speak to this? I, I, I think what's been proposed makes sense to, to just keep it as is for now. And so you'd be in, opposed to Diana's motion? Isn't that basically Diana's? Well, yeah, Diana's motion is to leave it as is without the hearing of walls. Just right. Correct. Well, correct. Add the tearing of walls is not allowed. Right. Or well, no, I don't even think she's she's not proposing that because she didn't want to change the development. She's just saying it would those limits would apply to all, including retaining walls. My understanding. But so how will we we do that if we don't do a code text amendment? Well, she's saying that it would be the retaining wall could be six feet. You know that would whatever the limit is in subsection one. To at that section, I mean at uh tier um retaining wall. Well, that. Retaining walls would be included in that maximum height of walls and fences. And I don't want to, you know, if I'm wrong, uh, Diana? Diana's motion. I'm just trying. That's my understanding. Of it. Diana, you hear what, what Len is saying, correct? No. Could you repeat it, please? If, if she could restate the motion. Okay. So, Len, if you would. Yeah, no, no. My understanding is that Diana is saying that we just keep those limits in subsection one and that they reply, they apply to retaining walls as well all types of walls and fences. Right, but if we keep it that way, we have been allowing tiering of walls. Agreed. Right. I understand. But we so, haven't accomplished anything. Yeah, that doesn't accomplish anything if, if unless you want to add language that's saying tiering of walls well, I, is I think, allowed. I think the, the corollary was that and be interpreted that that's the limit and that you cannot tier walls. It doesn't say you can tier walls. It doesn't say you cannot tier walls. It's just... So, it, to change town the staff's interpretation of what they, okay my understanding again of what her motion was it, Diana you're not you're not getting all of that okay maybe anywhere so i don't I, I don't understand that is it a case by case decision and then it's approved by the zoning board it... no it, it's because the code doesn't say that you can't have more than one fence on your property or more than one of a wall and a fence on your property so it's it's not addressed in there so your point would be to address it and say no it's not allowed that, that that's what I got out, out of the conversation that you wanted no tier walls higher than either the four feet, six feet or eight feet, depending on where they are on the property. Is that correct, Diana? So I think we would need specific language stating that. But can't you do it? Well, it's it's right. Thank you, Jane. I would. I think she's saying you inter. It's, okay, it's okay. again inter a matter of interpretation okay, because it's one second. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. 
Hold on, Diane. We're trying to get you in. Yeah, right. I understand. That would be ideal. We don't see you yet. There we are. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Len, you were saying. Oh, I, I think it's more of an interpretation issue again. It's sort of like we were talking about before because you, it doesn't say you can't, it doesn't say you can't. Okay. So staff has been interpreting that you can have more than one or, you know, the, there is a limit to the height, but it doesn't mean you can't have two walls. So it would be another. So what Diane is saying, is, right, is saying that it be interpreted that that's the limit. Is, is that correct, Diana? The limit in subsection one is the height limit. I still believe that because of what Michael, the information that Michael gave us, that in the past these these height these height limits have been observed and has had to come before the board as a variance. I still think that Senate Bill 250 wouldn't close us out because we have interpreted it that way before. No, but it, that was a that wasn't a retaining wall, and it it was just a straight. It was one wall. It it does it doesn't gate. have any impact on whether you could have more than one retaining wall interpretation wise right and and again i still feel that the size of lots is a self-limiting factor anyway so i, I think it just takes solve takes care of itself so, what if i'm a proponent of a tiny that? home then i could make uh i could go up pretty high and put my tiny home on it is that what you want to see in juno beach but you couldn't because you're still limited by the height of the principal structure from the average grade correct Correct. Well, couldn't right. I have a one story? Um, say I can right. go up to 40 feet. Couldn't yeah. I have a one 10 foot, one story house uh, at 20 feet? So I'd have a series of retaining walls to put me up 20 feet because that's my optimum beach view. We, we still measure it from whatever the crown of the road is or whatever the finished grade is, which is the average grade before land alteration. So, I mean, could you? Yes. Yeah, I but... wanted one story. So I bring in 30 feet of fill and have a couple of retaining walls. You're yeah. saying that that's allowed in the code, and I think that's is that's absurd. The issue here is that the, the code specifically Jane, says could interpret it. All heights. Jane is speaking. Staff could interpret interpret it differently, like Len is saying. They could write a memo, <laughs> like we talked about on the other thing, and say we will not allow a series of walls because that's not what it's it's stating. And then. Couldn't that also be addressed under harmony if somebody tried something like that? It could be, correct. It could be. So Frank I like is Jane's to idea. To, okay. So to follow up on Diana's motion, which is on the floor right now and has been seconded, would you think that rather than having moving forward with a code revision here, that we could simply do an interpretation of town uh, interpretation of the code in a memo? That would address Diana's concerns. I'm sorry, you're asking. Yes, I'm, I'm yes, asking. yes, we, we could do that. Yes. Okay. And Len is, Len is in agreement that we could come up with something like that. Would you like to bring that back to us perhaps at our next meeting for review? Diana, if you would be in agreement with that? I I think anything that would clarify is better. Okay. So could we? Diane, would you be willing to withdraw your motion then so that we could change that into a proposal that Frank come back at the next meeting with interpretive language that would resolve the issue that you've raised today? I'm struggling with that one because I understand that the guidance and policy is what we need to satisfy the Senate Bill 250, but... Um, The making a motion to observe the maximum height of walls and fences that's already in our code. I, Len, do I even need a motion if it's just staff providing? I, I, I don't believe you need a motion. Yeah. I mean, I don't believe you need a motion if you I, just And I can definitely bring it back to. But I understand that. But he wants, uh, Jim wants to know the majority of the board agrees with that, right? Right. Uh, the question is, Dinah, would you withdraw the motion so that Frank can take a different approach, was to which is to come back with an interpretation of how policy, current policy, will be applied that would meet your concerns 
I think what I heard Lynn say was everybody has to agree that they want this to be the maximum high. And then he'd write a memo to say that. So right? Got a consensus then. Yeah. Did I miss no. that? I didn't say everyone, just three. <laughs> right. Okay. So are we in agreement? Michael, would you what would so to bring it back? To bring back interpretive language from staff, how they will apply current policies in the future. Fine with me. Hey, Lori? Yes. Jane says yes. Nancy? Yes. Yeah, Nancy's in agreement and Diana's in agreement as well. Okay. I'm in so, agreement so long as it's observing the maximum height. Yeah. Uh, yes. No, no, that's, four, that's, that's the understanding, Diana. Okay. Okay. I missed a lot. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. We appreciate your, your Thank you. diligence, Diana, and sticking <laughs> to it, your perseverance as well. Okay. Frank, uh, Jim, just before we move, I, I just had a question. It's going to relate to the next topic. So in the Lyra, 520 Lyra, Yes. It says the average grade is 30.6, but then it says the finished floor is 31.6. Mm -hmm. Like what's what's so, that disparity? Well, finished but, grade is the average grade uh, before land alteration. Right. But that doesn't mean that that's where they're putting this concrete slab. So they're putting the concrete slab a foot higher or whatever the difference is starting from. But we measure building height from finished grade. Oh, so you still so measure from the 30.6. Because, because okay. they want to start a foot higher. Gotcha. Now their house is technically cannot be more than 29 I'm feet. Okay. I got you. You're, you're, still, you're still measuring from the average grade and or crown irrespective of, of where they put their finish. Right. Yeah. In this case, I believe it was crown of the road, but they show finished just, grade either way. I was a little confused by that. Thank you. I have Please, to sign every off here. This says it's confusing. Okay. Jane? Thanks. Nancy, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. I have to sign off here. So I don't know if Jane can step in if we're going to have any Okay, Jim, we'll, we'll take your um, we'll other votes. Our voting but okay, otherwise, thank you. thank you all for your time. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to agenda item five discussion on clarifying the topic of topographical features for council. Yasmin has something. Yasmin. Please. Just to clarify, was the motion withdrawn by Diane and we got a consensus? Yes, so, yes the motion with which one? Thank you. Good question, Yasmin. Thank you. Okay, um, before we get into a discussion here, I just wonder. Um, Obviously, you know, Frank might want to go in here. Diane has put out a paper talking about contradictions between the comprehensive plan and um, town code. And at some point, maybe Frank, you'd like to speak first, but I guess a question for Len would be, does he see, where does he stand on that issue of Diana's points there that there's a contradiction between I mean, the two I, documents? I don't think there's a contradiction because I think the code reflects the same language that's in the comp plan about slope and topograph. I mean, the site plan criteria is pretty much identical to what the cop plan says. Okay, so that, that's that's a discussion that we'll have to have then to see whether the, I mean, it's actually- I mean, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the comp plan says maintain and enforce land development regulations so the development is planned in accordance with the natural characteristics of the land, such as slope, elevation, drainage patterns, and native vegetation. And then the site plan criteria said is planned in accordance with the natural characteristics of the land including about limit to slope, elevation, drainage patterns, natural vegetation and habitats and unique physical features. I mean, it's a little more, the land development regulations are a little more restrictive. Than I, I think she's also so referring I, to um, the, the Florida building code that we adopted in, sub, in section six. Right, but that last language about such as the requirements to preserve topographical features, that's not in the code. I was confused by that too. The language in the comp plan, in my mind, could potentially conflict with the Florida Building Code because the Florida Building Code that we've adopted by reference shows right. pictures, and I'm not a builder, but it shows pictures of a sloped area and they cut it off and they they cut oh. out a square to build on. Okay, or they the put walls in and build up. And anyway, it doesn't preserve the slope in my mind, but it seemed to be uh, acceptable building, building methods under the Florida uh, yeah. Building and I code. get that, Diana, the, but the building code is not telling you you have to do. It's saying that you can't like if you're going to construct it. I mean, you can do it, but that wouldn't negate our way of doing it. That wouldn't negate our code, our land development code. So the building code is just saying, yeah, if you're, you know, there's a way to, you know, you can dig into the slope or whatever. But that doesn't mean the town has to allow people to dig into the slope. Right. right? They have a way of how to attach mini like homes. Like how it should be done. Doesn't right. mean that we allow mini homes or tiny homes in the in Juno Beach. Yeah. 
the, the building code's telling you if you're going to do it, this is how you have to do it. But it's not saying you have to do it or allowing you to do it necessarily. Um, Diana, does that if, make sense to you? No, I I understand. Okay, and if, Frank, if, if I may, yeah. So the um, so this item, as directed by council, wasn't actually to discuss topographical features. It was to clarify what Diana and the board wanted to discuss, so that, that way staff can bring it back to town council. And then have council say yes or no to to how to proceed. Right. Um, so that's really why we're here today. Um, in the memorandum, I I attached what Diana gave us um, gave the board at the at the first workshop, uh, which was attachment number two at that time that talks about topographical features. So we would want to clarify what the ask is from the board so that we can we can pass that along to council. Right. The reason I started off asking Len was because Diana's interesting document here from May 1st indicated that she thought there was a conflict between code and comp plan. And it seems to be clear now that there's not. So that's not what we're going to be asking council to discuss. Correct, Frank? We have that off the table. Correct. So Thank it's you. It's not a legal yes. contradiction anymore. It's really how do we want to approach this topic? Of right. I, I think this is another interpretation issue. <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, it's like how, you know, when you're talking about protecting the slope and all that kind of stuff, it's how that's interpreted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, without going too into it, I think it goes more, more in, it, it, it's more intense than that because the first language is prohibit additional fill, you know, and the use of retaining walls. Well, uh, oh yeah, I didn't get into I, the, per, yeah, yeah, I agree. No, that's more restrictive. I, yes. I agree. But I, I was just, I was, totally high level there okay mm -hmm. so diana if, if the question here is not a matter of changing or or resolving an apparent legal conflict between the two documents what what are your thoughts here how well my thoughts are how do we comply that we're not as a board we're not allowed to approve anything that's in conflict with the comprehensive plan or our ordinances and as our attorney so eloquently put it, he read from the ordinances and read from our code and they're the same, you protect the slope. So how do we do that as a board? I don't think a series of retaining walls and building your property up so you have your best view is a way to do that. So it's it's a little, it's similar to our la our previous conversation and this 520 Lyra, you know, brought up some of those issues, but there's other homes that are on the secondary dune that have put in retaining walls and built themselves above their prospective neighbors. I, I think of like San Francisco and as it goes up the hill, each little house has their own little view. But what we seem to allow is a series of these retaining walls and then you can build your home so you block your neighbor's view, which, um, you know, I know we don't protect view shed in our code and, um, but it doesn't seem to preserve the topography of the land. And I think that's necessary to be addressed because in our comp plan and in our ordinances, as just stated, it requires you to preserve that slope. Okay. So Diane, if I can just put words into your mouth then, you suggest that there should be a more focused discussion on how we can better preserve the natural slope of land in Juneau Beach. Is that kind of getting it in a nutshell? Yes, yes. And so we're in compliance with our comp plan and with our code. Right. Oh, okay, good. So we don't have anything specific to suggest now in terms of an actual ordinance or anything like that, even if we could do such a thing, but clarification may be needed, you're thinking, and therefore we should discuss this. I, I did provide um, a news 34-913. I was directed to do that at our first workshop. They, um, and Frank said similarly to they provided the our, the initial memo to council and they didn't understand what it meant. So at our meeting, that next meeting, I provided the memo that I gave to you guys and it's got the same date. It just gives a problem statement and then uh, has this one through eight on 34-911. So everybody should have gotten that. I, I would propose this language, except we have Senate Bill 250 that we've decided for some reason to discuss at the end of our meeting instead of the first of our meeting. But if we could have some sort of guidance or policy memo that uh, 
based on 905 and this the height, you know, that you can't bring in fill unless you're in a flood zone. And other codes do that. Um, I know if a town of Lake Worth wasn't exactly the same code, but they had the language about, you know, fill minor grading permitted for landscaping drainage purposes. And um, but the so I think other codes do address you know, bringing a fill to make your lot a different height. So Len, we could, in an ideal world without these Senate bills, we could consider what Diane has just suggested, but given that there is this restriction from right. the state, is there any wiggle room for us to even go forward with the discussion? There's, I think there's, well, there's not much wiggle room, let's put it that way. And so if we want to get into 250, maybe we should get into 250 now. So. You know, what 250 says, I mean, we're not, I, I can skip over the moratorium language because we aren't proposing a moratorium, moratorium, but it says that we may not propose or adopt more restrictive or burdensome amendments to our comprehensive plan or land development regulations, or propose or adopt more restrictive or burdensome procedures concerning review, approval, or issuance of a site plan development permit or development order to the extent that those terms are statutorily defined before October 1, 2024, and that any such more, more burdensome or restrictive comp plan amendment land development regulation or procedure is null and void ab initio, which means it has no effect. And then there's that retro language that says this subsection applies retroactively to September 28, 2022. So real life example, in North Palm Beach, we revised our R1 regulations in October of 2022 to change some massing issues, it's void, can't enforce it because it was adopted after the deadline. So really until October 1, 2024, there's very little we can do to change our code or change our comp plan. I mean, we can be more permissive, that's fine, but anything that's more restrictive procedurally or you know, through the comp plan process, through the, the LDR amendment process or you know, procedurally, through the site plan process, there's very little we can do. Um, I, Diana, back to you then, following up on what Len has just said, do you see any of the items on your list of eight proposed ordinance language um, that might be adopted as interpretation of current code as opposed to modifying current code? In other words, that would not conflict with what the state has restricted us from doing. Yeah, I think it is, it's intended to be clarifying to what we already have, the language about preserving slope in our comp plan and preserving slope in our ordinances. Well, how do you do that? Okay. I mean, we can get into interpretation, but the problem is if you're going to require the submittal of additional types of information, then you're adopting procedure that's more restrictive or cumbersome or burdensome, not cumbersome. So it's it's a very it's a very tight line. I, I mean, look, the legislation I think is ridiculous for us, especially when we were so minimally impacted by the hurricane. But it is what it is. Well, the the portion that could be interpreted as potentially more procedural requirements requires the sealed engineer drawings to of the proposed build, right. proposed land gradings that will not adversely affect the characteristics of the land. But I do believe in our process, we already require some engineering drawings so you're not eroding your neighbor's property or you're not destabilizing oh, yeah. uh, no, we the do adjacent require. property. So, you know, perhaps that could just be policy to understand what we already require. Diana, just a suggestion, and I'd like to hear what Frank has to say as well as Len on this, but um, would you like to come back with any suggestions for clarifying how we interpret current code and regulations differently as opposed to adding new regulations, which we're not allowed to do? Well, I think that this proposed ordinance language could be put into a interpretation memo or guidance policy. We're not there yet, um, Diana. I, I need clarification first, then I have to take it to council and they have to give us the blessing to move forward. And once they do that, then that's when we can start talking about language. So right now, the clarification part, that, I mean, from, from what I started writing was, 
you know, regulations to protect the natural slope of the land in Juno Beach. And then if that's the go ahead, and then I bring that to council and uh, we can have a discussion on how to do that, whether it's prohibit fill or or just clarifications, memo to staff or, you know, whatever else uh, we may have to yeah, do. It's a it's a tightrope there. Yes. And, and maybe during that discussion, just, um, you know, we, we can talk about, you know, the the Lake Worth elevation requirements. Those are actually floodplain requirements, which we currently have in our town code. So we're, I, I believe, um, without double checking everything, I believe we actually require all of those when we talk about the special flood hazard area, which um, some of those items are included in your pro, uh, in your proposal of the eight items. Um, so Diana, just to follow up on what Frank has said, Frank, I, I think I understand this correctly. Taking your broad objective to preserve our natural slopes, in Juno Beach, Frank could go to council and ask council whether they would be in agreement for him to take a look at our current code, possibly clarify interpretations of how the code is applied and um, see if council will permit him to move forward with that. And that would then be brought back to us with such suggestions. Do I have that right, Frank? Yes. Okay. And Diana, does that make sense to you? It does. I um. I guess I would just make a comment on on where we want to be as a high performance organization. Um, we said that this was an issue a month ago, and then it went to council. Now it's coming back to us, and we're saying it's an issue. So we've said it's an issue twice. Council has said it's an issue once. And we still don't have, we're still hitting the wall that we don't understand what you mean. So I'm at a loss because it seems like we would be further along than that. And forget it. I mean, I know that Senate Bill 250 has thrown everything into the shredder. So we have to start from zero. But I just don't want to miss this opportunity that maybe this is a learning point. Why do we have to say it's an issue, you know, three times and then wait a month? It's just, it. I don't understand that. All right. Well, there is some frustration there. I, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but as Frank wrote in his memo, council is seeking clarification on how the council, I'm sorry, how the planning and zoning board would like to discuss this. So I think we're trying to move this forward today by saying, council, would you let Frank look at the current code, look at how we apply it right now and look at areas where, well, maybe we're not so sure how to apply it. And he could come back perhaps with some areas where we would tighten up interpretations of current code. To me, that would be a step forward and that would be a positive outcome. Well, with 250, we can't tighten up current code. So we're going to say, how is it interpreted in the field? That's, that's why I added the word interpretation. We wouldn't change okay. a word code or you know, comprehensive plan. It would be simply, are there areas where maybe it's not, there's not a clear set of traditions for how we interpret things and those could be clarified in memo. So I think that's what we're asking Frank to ask council for permission to do. How, how about if we have a memo that, that says, how does a series of walls with fill meet our current comp plan that allows preservation of slope? You know, what possible interpretation could that be? I know I'm frustrated. Maybe I should go get a drink of water. I'll be right back, okay? Um, uh, that was more or less the previous agenda item, which I think we've we've you know moved forward from at well, this point. Well, this is also fill and retaining walls for this one because it's how do you preserve slope and allow someone to build at the height that they want to, you know, because they get a better view. Well, if you're preserving the slope, that change in height would be a, a, a necessarily in my mind, under my uninformed interpretation, layman's. That, okay. that wouldn't fit our comp plan. If, if Frank gets permission from council to move ahead in this direction, he can start to address the concerns that you're raising today. And we can take a look at areas where possibly current interpretations aren't clear and could be clarified. And that would be moving us forward. It won't resolve everything, but it will move us forward. And I think that's our goal. Or change the comp plan because I don't want to be in a situation where we're approving things 
that doesn't comply with the comp plan. So that would also be something that you can't have the comp plan that says one thing and then do something else. So maybe well, think, think about it that way. Didn't Len kind of resolve that at the beginning of this discussion by saying that he it's didn't the same see in the code contradictions in the comp plan? Len, go ahead. Please. No, I was just saying it's just, it's it's not a matter of amending the comp plan. Well, we can't amend the comp plan is is you can't amend it under two hundred and fifty anyway. It's just like <laughs> of course, <laughs> but they um but they're they're the same. I guess so. That's why I'm saying like the only thing it could be the only way we could address it was through an interpretation issue of some right. kind. Well, let's move forward with the interpretation. Then, if we're all in agreement on that. Okay, everybody's in agreement on that. We will move forward. Thank with you, Frank. Request. But can I say one more thing? If we're going to allow series of walls of of whatever height you want and bring in as much fill as you want, then we would have to amend the comp plan to make it less stringent, which I think would be fine under two hundred and fifty. Otherwise, we're we're not in we're not in compliance with our comp plan in my mind, my opinion. <laughs> Okay. All right. In that case, I think we've covered our agenda items. Um, are there comments from the oh, board? We had a discussion on 250 and 1604. Oh, well, yeah, we, we kind of talked about 250. Oh, we can talk discussion. about 1604. So 1604, ironically, is, um, so it's an amendment of one from last year where, you know, basically they were saying you municipalities, you can't regulate building design elements for single family and two family homes. And then they had all these exceptions if they were historic, if it was necessary for if it's in a CRA. But the one that we latched on is that you couldn't do it unless you um, unless you had a board. It's the way it reads is the dwelling is located within the jurisdiction of a local government that has a design review board and architect review board, which is what we did. And we created we made the planning zoning board, the architectural review board. And that's sort of how we addressed it. But then they took away that exception and said, well, no, the review board had to be created before January 1, 2020, which ours wasn't. And then it also, it you know, it exempted PUDs, which seemed natural because, you know, PUD is a cohesive development. And it even limited that. It says you can't regulate these building design elements, even in a PUD, unless the PUD was adopted before July 1, 2023, which we've already passed. So you can't even do it there. And when they're talking about building design elements, they're, I mean, they're, it really goes to architecture because they're talking about external building color, architectural, the type or st style of architectural cladding material, the style or material of roof structures or porches, the exterior non-structural architectural ornamentation, the location or architectural styling of windows or doors. And then they talk about the garage and the layout of the rooms and that kind of stuff. But they essentially took away our ability to regulate architecture with respect to single and two family homes. That 1604, I mean, they did some other stuff too about comp planning and all this other stuff, but as it impacts this board, that's essentially what they did. Thanks. So, I mean, we can still do it for commercial. We can still do it for multifamily residential. You know, we had that whole charrette on the architectural styles. It could still be applied to commercial projects, mixed use projects multifamily residential projects, just not one and two story homes. So I not one and two family homes, correct that. So yeah, we, and, and in response to a question that's been raised before, we could have another castle. Okay, comments from the board, Jane, any comments? Under 1604, is it at date? Let's just, all right, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, you have a question on Before we go to comments on the board, go ahead, please. 1604? Can I no, comment on that one? Sure. Oh, no, go ahead, please. Okay. Our, so for the architectural review board, um, architects, for the architectural review by the ARB, do we just can't do those for single family and two family homes because of the date? Yes, because of the date. Because so they, because I, I, I assume that we were not the, and I don't know who this was, I never knew who this legislation is directed toward exactly, but I assume that other municipalities or units of local government did the same thing that we did and said, okay, well, we do have architectural styles we want to enforce, so we're going to designate an architectural review board and then satisfy the requirements of the statute and then continue to apply our architectural standards. But they took that away because you had to have your board in place 
in 2020, which we did not. So that's where that date comes in. And well, I mean, the fact that you can't even apply it to PUDs anymore is even nuttier to me, but. Would it be helpful to just exclude the building design elements? Because it specifically says that the building design elements doesn't include height or bulk, right. orientation, layout of the dwelling, right. buffering, screening. Um, you know, I think like our harmony is our harmony would still apply. You know, there's things that we look yeah, at yeah. that no, it's are really, part it's, of what color is the building and how are the interior rooms laid out. It, it, it's really just directed to the architecture because you can't dictate, you know, our architectural styles are all based on what the material is and how the windows are shaped and, you know, all that kind of stuff is what makes up the architecture of the building. But the other stuff is all still feel, you know, bulk orientation, location, that's all still fair game, but that's regulated essentially through your building development regulations where your setbacks, your height, your all that kind of stuff. It's It's the architecture. So could the single family homes, could you still provide those plans to the board? And we just won't review it as an architectural review board, but we get them anyway as courtesy because this does, it, hmm, this one doesn't sunset in 2024, right? Does it have a sunset date on it? No, it does not. So it's really more the it, 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 this the site plan really it doesn't impact it's really the appearance review and you're limited to what you can review. So harmony can always be considered, correct, Lynn? I think harmony is under the site planning, right? But it, so we, yeah, we can't call yeah. it architectural review. We can call it a harmony review. We can't. Well, it would just again be site plan review, but now site plan reviews back to staff. Really, all this board would do would be the appearance review and the first criteria. Well, it does have a harmony in the in the appearance yes, review criteria as well. So, but like number one is pretty much off limits is is the whole architectural style, and then you know you still can talk about, I guess you can still talk about proportion, um, and design and and elevator and stairwell shafts and on site accessory features and that kind of stuff. But it's really it takes out number one of our appearance review for single family and. Two family. Okay. Any further questions for Len about state regulations? No. Okay, let's go on to comments from the board. Jane? None? Lori? No. Michael? Okay. I don't, Diana, I want to thank you for your perseverance today and all the homework you've done <laughs> in providing us with, uh, with backup materials here. It's led to quite a bit of discussion, and uh, we appreciate your efforts and for sticking in with the, the Zoom call. Um, Frank has no comments and Kurt, no, no comments for us. Yasmin or Isabella, no, no comments. So with that, everyone, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Wait, Matt, you didn't, I didn't get to do comments. I'm Can sorry. You, did I, I didn't did get I, to do comments. I, I'm sorry. I skipped you by accident there. I thought you had done your comments. Pardon. Go ahead, please. The first one I have was David Cox made a comment at our last PNZ meeting about redevelopment of condominiums, and I just wanted staff to provide the board with it, their response. Um, yes, of course. Um, actually, staff spoke to Mr. Cox before he made that comment, and, and I think that's why his um, tone changed a little bit. Uh, we, we have regulations about the coastal construction control line already established you know, the ones that we follow from 1979 versus 1997. So the state follows the 1997, the town follows the 1979 on top of the 50 foot setback. So that was clarified to him as well. And um, previously to that comment, staff actually um, attended an HOA meeting with the residents of the SURF to answer any questions that they may have on the, on the topic as well. And I I have seen um, some petitions going around, but could you give a, a brief summary of what's going on with the sir? Um, we staff, uh, at least I have not seen any petitions um, come our way, so I, I don't know about that. Uh, what's happening with the surf is that there's a developer that's reached out to the HOA and um, given them a, a price to buy their building. Um, per their regulations, they need, I believe it's 75% of the residents to say yes if they want to sell. 
if they're willing to sell, they want to knock down the building and construct a new project um, in that property. And for our code sections that apply to redevelopment of the condominiums on the coast, do you, can you say what those, where it is in the code? Is it just the... Well, the, the RH zoning district would apply since this isn't a residential high density. Um, and then we have uh, construction east and west of the coastal construction control line. I don't know the specific code section, but I could email it to you. Um, it's in the 1300s, 34, 1300s, something. Um, and there it tells you what you can do building wise east of the construction control line and west. Um, and then on top of that, the town also has a 50 foot setback uh, that we implement um, west of the coastal construction control line. And it talks about minor structures and main structures. Um, if, if you recall, or maybe some of the board members recall, um, the Ilasova pool actually was east of the coastal construction control line, but it was within the 50 foot setback. So we did allow for minor structures um, if um, if council approved it. So that came to the planning and zoning board and town council. So something similar would have to happen um, with the surf if they decided to, to build um, adjacent to that line, the CCCL. So, so the pool and the, and the patio is considered a minor structure? Uh, we have a, we have a specific definition for it, okay. um, and the the code section um, is actually the Coastal Regulations Division Eight, and it starts um, in limitations east of the CCCL, which is thirty four dash one one two four. One one two four. Correct, and then it goes to limitations between the CCCL and the town's fifty foot setback, and that's eleven twenty five, and it just keeps going, and then. One of the figures, one of the first ones, actually tell you what you can allow, what's allowed to be built between the CCCL and the 50 foot setback. Diana, further? Okay, thank you. I've, I had another question about um, the. I had another question about the building permit fees. And I appreciate you providing me with the information from April, 2023 and May, 2023. And it looked like the total of those two months was $3,237,127.30. But can you tell me how these funds show up on our town's budget? Because Matt, when he was doing the budget, he showed 900,000. Diana, can I just ask, would that be perhaps something you might discuss with Frank privately rather than at the PNZ meeting? Oh, I think it's really important because there's been an issue with permit fees um, from some of our citizens and whether 3% is the correct amount if you have an existing property and you're just performing maintenance. Right. I'm not, so I'm not questioning me, the legitimacy of the question. It's just the, the, the time and place for posing the questions and, and asking for responses because that is not really a PNZ issue. Well, um, could you just send Frank your questions and I'm sure he'll get back to you? Well, I think it's like two sentences. So if you could just speak to that, is it accounting and that the, that the permit fees are? Uh... Um, Diana, that, I, I saw the email going back and forth between you and Matt. Um, that question would actually be better answered by Matt or Michael um, Segura, since, since they're the ones that actually dictate where that money goes in the four year uh, window that we have. There's a floor to the statute that actually tells you how you can spend the money, how long you can hold on to that money, what you can use that money for. Um, Matt That's all the Mike information I was be, interested in. And then how yeah. it shows up on our budget, uh, like Amherst. Matt, stuff Matt and Michael would be, Matt and Michael would be the two correct people to talk to you about that. I believe once Matt comes back, I believe it's tomorrow. Um, that I saw on the email, he he'll be. I'll make sure that he responds to you. But I I, I saw in there that he okay. Would thank you. He's already provided me one response, but it seems like every response generates additional questions. So I probably should just sit. I'm sure it does. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. The meeting is adjourned.